Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going through niacinamide. We're gonna go through what it is, how to use it, how to combine it with other actives and some product recommendations. So if you wanna know how I recommend using niacinamide for benefiting your skin, then just keep watching. So I feel like niacinamide is a pretty polarizing ingredient for some reason. I mean, it has so many benefits for the skin, but I feel like some people either love it or they hate it or they've had bad experiences with it. Um, so today we're just going to go through it. And I feel like also it's an ingredient that has a lot of misconceptions and also people fear a little bit. So we're just gonna break it down very simply and just go through everything niacinamide. If you're new here, then welcome. My name is Kenna. I'm a biochemist, cosmetic formulator, and a business consultant for skincare startups. And I meant to post this video on Monday, which is the day I normally post, Monday and Thursday, but it's just been a crazy week. So forgive me, it is now Wednesday and this is going up. Okay, so niacinamide is also known as nicotinamide and it's also known as vitamin B3. Now it is the amide form of this water-soluble vitamin, vitamin B3, and it plays a big key role in our just cellular function. Um, it has lots of involvement in metabolic processes and, and it is pretty essential for our life. But for the skin, for topical benefits, there are so many and I feel like it's an ingredient that we all kind of know about um, but is almost a little bit undervalued, doesn't get the same street cred as like your vitamin C or your retinol or everything. And it actually has some really incredible benefits. Not only does uh, niacinamide have these benefits, but the products that it's metabolized into um, that can get into the cell and everything, just so many benefits. So yeah, we're gonna get right on into it. So basically what it does a lot of the time is it can really help with visibly enlarged pores. You know, if you're overproducing oils on your skin, it definitely helps out with this. It helps with hydration, so it's a really good humectant and helps strengthen your skin's um, moisture barrier and helping with the production of things like ceramides, so to strengthen the skin. It also is a really powerful antioxidant, um, so it can help repair UV-induced damage and reactive oxygen species that are in the skin from air pollutants and things like that and convert them into their reduced forms so that they're not causing damage to our cells. So really powerful antioxidant there. And then it also does have some effect on uh, anti-aging properties like wrinkle depth and pigmentation on the skin. So just overall, there's so many great things about it. And another bonus is it's very stable. So unlike most antioxidants, it's very stable when exposed to things like heat and light. And so this makes it really easy and great to formulate into skincare products. So a big common question people have and don't really understand is what percent do I need? You know, the ordinary and the inculus and all these places, a lot of them have 10% uh, niacinamide serums. And you know, that's kind of what people think is the best. And if 10% niacinamide works for you, then definitely go for it. And then even like Paula's Choice has a 20% that is supposed to really target those enlarged pores and what Paula's Choice calls orange peel skin. So, you know, really kind of thickening of the skin, holes and um, yeah, enlarged pores basically. So their 20% solution is supposed to really help with that. But the truth is it is effective even at much lower concentrations. So, you know, somewhere between one and 5% can be still really effective as far as like the antioxidant benefits, the pigmentation benefits, the wrinkle depth benefits. And so if you are looking to incorporate niacinamide into your routine, you don't have to go for that 10% or that 20%. You can just incorporate it into your routine. And I'm gonna get to this a little bit later, but at lower percentages in products that just have niacinamide in them. And you can layer multiple products that have niacinamide in it. You don't necessarily have to have a separate niacinamide product. Now, if you are using niacinamide to really tackle those things like enlarged pores, maybe you do want to have a specific product for it so that you are you know that that product is being effective for that purpose. But if you're just trying to get the overall uh, pigmentation and humectant and hydrating and antioxidant properties of niacinamide, then using it at a lower percentage is like 100% A-OK. -okay. Sorry if my lighting changes a little bit here because the it's been raining all day and the sun is just coming out. So if we're getting some flares, um, just bear with me here. So if you are new to niacinamide, maybe you do want to start out using it just three times a week and working your way up from there. But generally people tolerate niacinamide very well, especially if you're just using it within a, something like a moisturizer or it's combined with other actives in a serum where it's maybe at 5% or less. 
Um, if you are going for like a really high strength, like 10% or 20%, this is where maybe you wanna incorporate it into your routine a little bit slower, see how your skin reacts, and just make sure that it's all good. I mean, why niacinamide is kind of famous for causing sensitivity is because when it can convert it into nicotinic acid or niacin, like the acidic form of it, that causes flushing on the skin, that causes redness, and it can cause sensitization. Um, and it also just doesn't have the same benefits as the actual niacinamide molecule. So generally products are formulated to totally avoid this. And there actually have been developments in producing niacinamide where it just is super stable in that form and even at lower pHs it doesn't convert to niacin but this is kind of where that sensitization and that flushing comes from especially if you are layering on and this is we're gonna get to this right now but if you are laying on acids or vitamin C that are formulated much lower all you want to do is just wait a few more minutes before you're putting on your niacinamide because your skin will not if you're putting on a ph pro, a product with a ph of three your skin is not going to stay at a ph of three but if you've just put that product on let it sink into the skin then go in with your niacinamide so you're not converting it into nicotinic acid or niacin which can be sensitizing and cause that flushing feeling anyways that brings me to the next part where i'm going to talk about what actives you can combine niacinamide with and the answer is like all of them. There's no ingredient that you can't combine with. The really famous pairing that they say not to do is vitamin C and niacinamide. Now, this has been totally debunked and you can do this. So you can definitely layer on your vitamin C products and your niacinamide products. And sometimes they're even formulated together. So it's just totally not true. <laughs> But you do want to make sure that if you are using vitamin C or like an alpha hydroxy acid that you just wait a couple minutes if the product wasn't formulated together but just wait a couple of minutes before you put on a niacinamide product to make sure that it's kind of sunk into your skin first and then you're going in with your niacinamide and niacinamide really pairs well with things like retinol and alpha hydroxy acids and vitamin C Retinol specifically because retinol can be so sensitizing and niacinamide is a humectant and hydrating and it brings moisture into the skin. Also, when you're doubling up on antioxidants, so you have the antioxidant power from niacinamide and vitamin C during the day that's going to protect your skin even more from being susceptible to things like UV damage and pollutants in the air. And at nighttime, if you're using retinol at night, pairing it with a niacinamide is going to be protective for your skin barrier and hydrating and also giving you more antioxidant properties as well. And if and niacinamide is good for wrinkle depth and retinol is good for targeting wrinkles as well, now you're just kind of marriaging those effects together, which is great. So definitely, definitely you can use niacinamide with all of these active ingredients. And if you ever do find that you're having a sensitive reaction to something, just stop everything Use a very gentle moisturizer and slowly bring things back into your routine. And if there's something that just on your skin is not working together, then stop using it. Everybody's skin is different. Some people are overly, overly sensitive. Um, you know, some people can tolerate 20% vitamin C. Some people can only tolerate five. So it just depends on the person. Some people will be able to tolerate the 20% niacinamide. Some people are gonna see all the benefits that they need at 4%. So, you know, this is about fine tuning your routine and figuring out what works for you. Now I'm gonna get into some products with uh, niacinamide in them and my favorite way of incorporating niacinamide into my routine is definitely by using niacinamide in products that already have it formulated in. I don't use any specific niacinamide uh, serums or like specific uh, standalone product that just has niacinamide in it. I don't really use it like that because to me there's just like no point if I'm getting niacinamide from other places. So product that I really like is this one. Now this is from the brand KTW which stands for key is the water and this is their Pure Vital Ample. And this is both vitamin B3, which is niacinamide at 5%, and then vitamin B5, which is panthenol at 10%. Now I love, love incorporating panthenol, and this is, so this is a way for me to get panthenol and niacinamide in one place, which I love that. This is just a really hydrating serum that I will do, you know, morning before my vitamin C or at night. I'll use that one as kind of a barrier repair serum just super, super hydrating. So I that's I love that product so much. It is so, so good if you have sensitive skin and dry skin, extremely hydrating and just powerful antioxidant properties from the niacinamide, but then also the panthenol in there as well. So that's one of my favorites. Um, another one that I just got sent this recently by Purito, and this is the Panthenol Rebarrier Cream. So again, this has Panthenol at 10%, but it also has Centella Asiatica and Squalane and Niacinamide. And this is just a lovely cream if you do get any 
redness. It's really just soothing and gentle. So I am already using products that have niacinamide in them. So I don't really feel the need to get like an extra one. Other great like drugstore niacinamide options are from CeraVe. CeraVe puts niacinamide in with its ceramide, uh, ceramides mix and hyaluronic acid all the time. So they have it in their Skin Renew Night Cream. They have it in their resurfacing retinol. So the nighttime retinol has niacinamide in there. So this is a case where I'm not, I don't need to combine my niacinamide um, serum and then do my retinol or anything. It's already in my retinol product. So I love though. Again, niacinamide is just an ingredient that I like to have in products that I'm already using. It's already in the serums I'm using. It's already in the moisturizers I'm using. I'm not looking for like a pure niacinamide serum, for example. And then, you know, another one is of course like Hiram's brand, Selfless by Hiram. He has his niacinamide and maracuja oil um, daily barrier support moisturizer. So this is just a nice moisturizer, but it also has the benefits of niacinamide. So that is perfect. So that's how I like to use it. Now, some people like to have that St. Alone Serum 100%, but I just find that it's an ingredient that is common throughout a lot of different skincare products. So if I'm using maybe just one product or if it's in a couple of products, then I'm getting the benefits of it and I don't feel the need to like get an extra one um, of pure niacinamide, if that makes sense. So I'd love to hear from you guys. Are you using niacinamide? How are you using it? What percentage? Are you kind of afraid to use it with other actives like vitamin C? alpha hydroxy acids, retinol. I hope after this video you're not because like I said before, it actually is good to use it with and there's benefits to using it with all of those active ingredients. So definitely don't be afraid of mixing those in your routine and everything. It's totally fine to use. And I'd also love to know, like, have you seen benefits um, from niacinamide? I think me personally, I definitely notice just a really healthy amount of sebum production on my skin. I don't have any enlarged pores and I've never really struggled with that. Um, and I don't generally get like blackheads or anything like that. So I, I can't really judge it on that from my personal experience, but definitely I do notice an effect on skin tone and texture and everything uh, when I am using niacinamide. So it's an ingredient that I love and that it's just a kind of, it's always there in my routine and it has been for a long time. So yeah, that's kind of how I think of it. You know, I have my, vitamin C serum, I have my, my retinol serums, I have my moisturizers, and if niacinamide can make its way into a couple of those products here and there, then that's just, that's how I like to incorporate it into my routine. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions about niacinamide, definitely leave them down in the comments below and I will get back to you. And thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on my next video.